Hallelujah. Good morning. How's everyone? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, yes, we are wonderful and good. Those of you online, glad you are here with us. Glad everyone is here in the building. Those who are on their way, we are loving, looking forward to seeing your faces. Hallelujah. We are so grateful. Hallelujah. All right, I have the privilege to give in a word, a scripture this morning. So I'm going to be giving a scripture from Romans 6, verses 10 through 12. I had it in me to give a reminder, just a little reminder this morning and every day to carry with us. Hallelujah. When you have it, say amen. Stand to your feet if you can. Hallelujah. All right, so Romans 6, chapter 6, verses 10 to 12, and I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. All right. It reads, when he died, Christ, talking about Christ, when Christ died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. Hallelujah. Is that right? It's the book. It's no more power. It's no more power through us through Christ. There's no power till sin that goes somewhere away from you. Okay? Let it go. Hallelujah. There's no power. So let's say it. Say it together with me. There's no power. There's no power. Don't give sin any power. He no longer has power. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, we thank you, Father. That we no longer agree with the power of sin in us to us or who is in Christ Jesus, Father. We thank you, Father, that we take this with us forever, Lord. Know who we are through Christ, Father, in our minds. We thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Come on. No power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have won the victory. Hallelujah. You have won it all for now me. Now tell him death. Death could not hold you down. You are the risen King. Seated in majesty. You 
for the risen King. Yes, death could not hold you down. You are the risen King, seated in majesty. You are the risen King. Somebody declare it. Hallelujah. Don't lift your voice today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have yeah. won. You, you have won. won. Hallelujah, 
raise them up in the house this morning. Hallelujah. Anybody grateful this morning? Is there a hallelujah in your heart? There's a hallelujah in my heart this morning. Hallelujah. 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 This time sing it to him. Hallelujah. 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 Daddy, we forget about everything but you right now come on put your mind on him
every test and every trial I love. Lord, I love Even in the worst of the worst times I love. Lord, I love Hey, come on, just think about how he's done. How he brought you out, Lord, I Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Daddy, we're so grateful this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, just want to thank you, Lord. Come on, lift your voice and thank him. Thank you, Lord. He's been so good, so thank, thank him. Thank you, Even when I thought I was down to my last, I say thank you.
worship him. Come on, stay right there and worship him. Daddy, we give you all the glory today. You get all the glory. It's not mine. It's not mine, every blessing. It's not my glory. It's not my glory. It's not my glory. Hallelujah. Now we have 
a beautiful opportunity to worship and to magnify the Lord. The expression of worship is not a matter of gratitude for what he has done, but is purely a focus on who he is. So when you think about who is God, you are Alpha. You are Omega. You are worthy. You are wonderful. You are lovely. You are kind. You are faithful. You are dependable. There is none like you, oh God. There is none like you, oh God. So can we as one church, as one voice, just begin to worship the Lord in this place? Come on, talk about Jesus. Say something about him this morning. God, you're a healer. You're a way maker. You're a bridge over troubled water. You're my everything, oh God. You're my everything, oh God. So here I am. Here I am. Here I am to God. Here I am. Here I am to say. I'll declare that you're mine. And I'm yours. You are. aspect of, wor of worship is in our declaration of who he is and our acknowledgement of who he is there is a warfare component that is connected to worship that when things wants to attack mind emotion soul circumstance there is something about your acknowledgement of who he is that begins to change the dynamics of how you fight. It is impossible for you to be worried in an atmosphere of worship because worship takes your perspective and your focus off of this and puts it on him. And when we begin to put our attention on him, then that gives us the permission to step back. We must decrease and allow him to increase. We serve a God that fights for us. Hey, hey, oh. So when we worship, we are declaring, God, I'm not strong enough, but you are. God, I don't have enough, but you do. I'm not smart enough, but all wisdom belongs to you. And I might not even know how to fight in this battle, but Lord, I will take my hands off. So you can have your way. And so what we want to do today. Because I, I definitely sense. El Gabor. In the room. The God of war. One level of worship. One weapon of worship. And warfare is worship. But another weapon is prayer it's prayer and, and I, I'm so glad for my brother that texted me this morning we are on the same page because the enemy is really coming after families and households understand Minister James that the enemy is not just uh, after you as an individual he's after your name he's after your household 
He's after your family. And if he can get you out of place, then that creates a breach in the family. But I'm so glad that we serve a God that not only wars for us, but he teaches us how to war. Yeah, yeah, he teaches us how to war. And, and so, as I was worshiping, um, I, I, I'm in agreement with what my brother told me this morning, texted me this morning, but he gave me more than that. Uh, where did Ariel go? Okay. All right. Because what we want to do is we want to pray for families. And we're going to start with the Griffin family. Because he had put his request out there. You may or may not know the details. And it doesn't even matter. God knows the details. He knows the details. And so, whether you are aware, whether you have walked in their steps or not, does not, uh, does not matter. What matters is that we bring our faith in line. The Bible says that there are two or three gathered together as touching and believing. He says, I will be there. I will be there. Now let me let me check the temperature. Let me check the faith in the room. Is there anybody that has faith in God that he can heal families? That he can deliver families? That he can restore families? That he can renew families? That he can reconcile families? All right, all right, all right, all right. So, so, we're, so we're in the right place. We're in the right place. This is how we fight. I had uh, posted in the band app a couple of weeks ago that if you don't feel like praying, push anyway to pray. Because something may be pushing against you to stop praying. And so there may be some of you that does not feel like praying, that does not feel prayer. Um, I need you to rebuke yourself and come in line with the Spirit of God. That men ought to always pray and not faint. That's what the word says. They ought to always pray and not faint. And so, we're going to start with one. But he has given me at least three families to pray for today. And so, we're going to start off with the Griffin family. If I can have you, come on down. Josh, Ariel, come on, Uriah, Sariah, where's Jane? She's not here today. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. Ukiah, amen. This is how I find my battles. Now, let me give you a quick education. A church is not a building. A church is the Greek word ecclesia, which means a called out assembly. And what we see in the birth of the church in the book of Acts is that a church is really a family of families. In Psalm 68, God said that the lonely he puts in families. He was talking about the church. And so when we have one family that is fighting, then it is incumbent upon us as the church, as a family of families, that we do not allow them to fight by themselves. How many got their war clothes on today? And so I need those that believe in faith to come and to surround this family. And we're going to pray for this family as a family of families. If you're watching us online, I need you right where you are to begin praying. We have a seven-day challenge that we started Wednesday that we would be intercessors and that for seven days that we wouldn't even pray for ourselves, but we would take that time and pray for somebody else. This is what that looks like. Now, I don't need you coming up here for show. We coming for warfare. We're coming because there's an attack on this family and we are believing God for the impossible. How many know the impossible is possible with God? How many of you know that all God needs is nothing to create everything? All he needs is nothing to do everything. 
And so we're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. For those of you that's closest to them, come on, put your hands on them. Let them know that you're there. If you're not close to them, then put your hands on somebody that is close to them. It's, it's something about when we touch that makes the difference. There's something about when we agree that makes the difference. So, Father, we thank you right now for this family. We thank you right now for you knew before we did. And you know the end of this thing before we do. You have the final say concerning Jasper, concerning, Lord, the Griffin family. Lord, you know where their faith is. You know where their struggles you know, Father God, those secret thoughts. You know, Lord God, the, 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 the agony of the soul. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you, Lord God, would be a shield for them. Comfort in the name of Jesus. Strengthened by your mighty hand. Cover them, Lord God, in your love. Bless them, Lord God, because of your grace. And be, Father God, a refuge for them. Lord God, you know the end of the story. But through it all, Father, we are praying for this family that you strengthen them. And we rebuke, Father God, the spirit of death and addiction in the name of Jesus. Lord, until you say otherwise, you have told us that healing is the children's bread. You have told us, Lord, that with your stripes, we, Lord God, can receive healing. And so, Father, we pray that you send physical healing to Loma Linda Medical Center. And we pray that you send emotional healing even here right now. We pray, oh God, that you, Father God, would send restoration, rest. We rebuke worry and anxiety and fear and torment in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are a strong tower where the righteous can run into and are saved. Lord, we thank you right now. I don't care what their history is. It does not matter what Jasper's history is. Your grace is able, Lord God. And so we call on you today. We call on you today, Lord. Strengthen them. Whatever you choose to do, Lord, let us be at peace with it. Let us declare that it is well in our soul. You are in control, Lord. You are in control. And we agree with you in the name of Jesus. Let your peace be their portion in the name of Jesus. Let your peace, which surpasses all understanding, guard the heart and mind in Christ Jesus. We rebuke, Lord God, the devourer of their joy. We rebuke, Father God, the devourer of their rest. We rebuke, Father God, the devourer of their sanity. But they will, Lord God, have a clean mind. In the name of Jesus, deal with those thoughts, Lord. Deal, Lord God, with that, with that silent scream. Deal, Father God. Even, Lord God, in stages and levels of grief, Father God, I pray that you would embrace them right where they are. For you are well able. We know that what we're asking of you is not difficult. You've done, you've done harder things than what we're asking. But we come to you because we trust you, Lord. You told us to make our request known with thanksgiving. And so that's what we're doing. And we thank you, Lord, because we know that you can do all things. And I pray, Lord, for the prosperity of this family. I pray for the healing of this family. I pray, Lord, that you will be glorified through this family in the name of Jesus. Let the backslider return to you, Lord God. Hey, God. Let the rebellious in their, in their family come back to you, Lord God. I pray in the name of Jesus that where there, Lord God, are people that are not in position, Lord, let there be a restoration. Let the winds come from the north, south, east, and the west to reclaim and to restore them just like Ezekiel prophesied over the valley of dry bones. Oh, wind blow, wind blow, wind blow, wind blow. In the name of Jesus, 
We're counting on you. We're counting on you. We're counting on you. We're standing on faith. We're standing on faith. While others are standing on business, we're standing on faith. Because we can't do it, Lord God. It's in your hands. It's in your hands, oh God. And we depend on you. In the name of Jesus. We give you glory, God. Give them might. Resilience. Endurance. Tenacity. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Now everybody that agrees, come on and give God praise with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. That was the first family that the Lord showed me. Hallelujah. This is our war cry. 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 We need an attitude problem in this church. This is our war cry. Hey, God. This is our war cry. change his mind. We come here to align with his authority. Hallelujah. But we pray. I, I want to encourage you. If you don't know what your assignment is of intercessory prayer, I want you to add the Griffin name to your assignment over these seven days. You may not understand it. You may not have walked through their shoes. But it does not negate you from being an intercessor. Now the next family name that the Lord put on my heart was the Pullum family. Can you guys come up front? Don't go nowhere, Griffins. We want you to pray for them like they prayed for you. Is, is this all right? Amen. Come on, those of you that are here, we're going to pray for your whole household. Hallelujah. Because there is a warfare that is taking place against your household. And you have the audacity to obey God. But I'm here to tell you that there's going to be areas where it seems like it's going to intensify. But don't fear. Don't worry. Because your battle has already been won. Psalm 27 is what I hear for you. That even though a host encamps against me, in this will I be confident. For the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So, Father, we pray right there for an increase of strength eh, and boldness in the spirit of God to take back what the enemy wants to claim concerning this family we pray father for generations we pray father for futures and for destinies Lord God I pray Lord even for the redemption and the reconciling of what they thought was lost Woo. Hey, the prophet said that what the canker worm and what the caterpillar has eaten, it will be restored unto you, woman of God. Do not worry about what you lost. Do not worry about what you lost. Opportunities and resources are coming back to you. In the name of Jesus, you won't have to look for it, but as you seek his face, it will seek you out. Wait.
wait and see. Opportunity is going to start seeking you out. In the name of Jesus. So, Father, we pray a hedge over this household. We pray a hedge over this name, over the address. Everyone that is connected, Lord God, to this family. We pray, Lord God, for the redemption of the bloodline. We pray, Lord, that you would curse what tried to curse them. Oh, God, even if things have come through generations, Lord God, it stops now in the name of Jesus. For you became a curse for us when you died on a tree that we might be free. So, Father, I pray for a new level of freedom, a new level of liberty in the name of Jesus, a new level of boldness to declare what the Lord has said, to rebuke the lies of the enemy in the name of Jesus. He has given you the authority to speak those things which are not as though they were. So we declare that what you have seen that came from hell is a lie. And I pray a new boldness to echo heaven, to declare what the word keeps showing you in your dreams, to declare what the Lord keeps speaking to you about until you see it manifesting, until it's coming, 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 it's coming. It's coming. We thank you right now, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We pray, Father God, for Jonas returning. We thank you right now for young men and young women, Lord, that will take their place even now. I thank you right now for expediting some things in them. I pray that you rebuke that lie that they can wait till they're older. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, children. I'm sorry, man. But what he has for you is now. What he has for you is now. Now is the day. Now is the time. Walk in it. Walk in it. Walk in it. I, I need a prophet, darling. Walk, walk in it. Walk in it. Walk in it. Walk in it. Walk. We curse every lie in the name of Jesus. Every fight, you will no longer be Jacob. There is an Israel in you, man of God. There is a victory in you, but it only comes as you surrender to the Lord. Your fight, he is changing the fight. In the He is changing the fight. Do you sense that, Jacob? So you know I'm not up here playing games. That is the Lord. That is the Lord. That is the Lord. That is the Lord. Come on, just receive him. You are a yes away, man of God. You are a yes away. You will no longer be known by who you were, but by who God has called you to be. He has called you to prophesy. Come on, man of God. He has called you to prophesy his word. There are people that they call your friends, but they need what God has put in you. They are waiting on what the Lord has put in you so they can be set free. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you right now for the evangelist. We thank you for the evangelist, Jay. We thank you right now. Hey, God, for a spirit of boldness for a spirit of boldness to declare what you have put in her heart, what you have spoken to her. I thank you, Lord, that her history has been preparation for her calling. But I thank you right now that you're going to begin repurposing. You gave her this personality, this attraction, this magnetism, and it wasn't for her to be popular. It was for her, Lord God, to be a conduit to make your name great. Give her a boldness, Lord God, to cry aloud and spare not. I pray the mantle of Isaiah be upon you, woman of God, that as you see, that you will have the boldness to speak as the Lord opens your eyes. 
in the name of Jesus. Lord, give her dreams. As she goes about her day, Lord, I pray that you even give her open visions in the name of Jesus. For the same mantle that's on her mother, Lord, God, rest on her. And I pray that she will not be afraid of it, that she will not reject it, but that she will embrace it, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for making her peculiar for your glory. Hey, you are going to struggle every time you try to fit in. Every time you try to fit in, you're going to struggle. Be at peace with who God has called you to be. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Father, for the children, for her children that are not here, that you arrest their hearts and minds wherever they are. Arrest them, Lord God, wherever they are. Arrest them wherever they are. Give them, Father God, a new declaration. We thank you, Lord, that you would rebuke the devourer, Lord God. As we are standing in the gap, send your word where they are right now. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. And we give you glory. And we give you glory. And we give you glory. We declare victory over the pull of household in the name of Jesus. Come on, if you're in agreement with me, shout victory. 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 Over every name that's assigned to the pull of household, victory. I declare new testimonies, victory. I declare new testimonies, victory. I declare new testimonies, victory. Let your prophecy and your testimony be that God did it. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let's magnify the Lord in this place. Let's magnify the Lord in this place. Hey, shut up about my short course. Hey, God, you will not have this house. You will not have this family. Hey, God. I pray a new peace over this household. A new peace over this household. Holy Spirit just reminded me when he was casting out devils, they accused Jesus and said, the reason why you're able to cast them out is because you are Beelzebub, the king of the devil. He said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. So we pray for the foundation of the Pullum household to be reestablished. For peace, we pray against the civil war that has taken place in this household. Let there be peace and reconciliation in the name of Jesus. Let them speak as one voice. Let, woo, shut up, I said, let them have one vision. In the name of Jesus, we thank you right now. We thank you. Ah, glory, glory, glory. Ah, okay, I, I, I heard a new name. All right, come on, Murray family. Come on, Murray family. I, 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 heard, I heard that for you too. Peace. Peace and reconciliation in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray.
So we pray for hearts. Prophet, if you could lay your hands on Anaya's heart. I'm talking to you. Over the hearts. Father, we pray for healing in hearts. We pray that the fight will cease. We thank you, Lord. I pray that there be a reevaluation of even the priorities of life. That nothing will be more important than you. And I pray, Father God, for peace where the enemy wants to bring turmoil. Peace where the enemy wants to bring in tension. Peace where the enemy wants to bring in. We have come against every attack in the name of Jesus. You will not have father nor daughter. You will not have this covenant. We thank you right now. We pray, Father God, against the spirit of manipulation. We pray, Father God, even against the attitude of what's fair and what's not fair, what's right, what's not right, what's deserved and what's not deserved. Lord, let there be peace. I pray, Lord, for the Murray family, even for his daughters that are not here today, that there will be a oneness, a unity in the family between father and daughters, between sisters. In the name of Jesus, we come against competition. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke the spirit of the older brother, but let them be one, oh God, in the spirit. Let them be one, oh God, in the spirit. Father, as they war for others, I thank you, God, that we war for them. As we stand, Lord God, as a garrison to keep out, Lord God, every influence that wants to come in, that wants to bring in turmoil and dispute, I pray, Lord, that even practically, Lord God, that you would teach them how to communicate. I pray, Father, that you would give them ears to hear, help them to be slow to speak and quick to listen. Teach them, Lord, that they might understand one another. I pray, Lord, that you would even change expectations, that they will not live in disappointment and frustration with one another. Let there be healing, Lord healing in their soul Father we thank you for you have given us the ministry of reconciliation help us to be one 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 this house will stand in the name of Jesus I even pray, Father, that through their unity, that you will begin to do a new work, Father God, in their whole household. Do it in their extended family, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. That aunties and uncles and cousins, Lord, nieces and nephews, Father God, will be delivered because of their example and their unity. In the name of Jesus, cause their light to shine. Cause their light to shine. Let others see their good works and glorify you, Father. Because they have decided to be who you have called them to be. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Come on, pray with me. Unity. 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 In the name of Jesus. Come on and give God praise in this place. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name. Come on, I, I, I got a word, but I, I, I got I to gotta obey God. I got to obey God. Uh, Kiera, come on and bring, bring your sons.
you're watching us online, there's a part of the Griffin family that's not here, but we pray for you. You're included in this prayer if you're watching us online. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Father, we thank you right now. We pray, Lord, for your establishment. As you were walking up, the Lord reminded me of Job, where it seemed like he had lost everything. And the, the, the temptation is that in the middle of it, that you would give up. But I want to remind you, woman of God, of the end of your story. Amen. The end of it. Every fight is intentional because they're trying to convince you to give up what's waiting for you at the end. And not just for you, but for Prince Ken, for King David, for your mother. I pray that she's watching. Your brothers, your uncles. For Moss, I pray that you're watching. What the Lord said three years ago, he has not changed his mind. Even if we may have changed our minds, even if we may have moved in and out of his will, God's word is his word and his life will not change his mind. And so I come to remind you and to strengthen you, woman of God, that where you are is not where you will be. Endure hardness as a good soldier for what you are waiting for, what he has promised you, it is coming. It is coming. It may be frustrating because it seems like it's taking longer than you want it to, but special orders require a little extra time. And the time is not for him to prepare it. The time is for him to prepare you so that when you walk into it, you will not convert what you're walking into as where you come out of. So he wants to prepare you to, for a new level of, 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 of authority to manage well what he's already prepared for you. And not just as a mother, but as a wife. Not just as a mother, but as a wife. Lord knows your heart and your desire and it's coming it's coming as you trust in him so I'm asking him for a date and he's not giving me a date he keeps telling me trust him family for strength. I pray for this family for clarity of purpose, for focus, that they would not lose sight. But I pray, Lord, that you will begin to redeem the time for them. With every yes that they give you, I pray that you would begin to redeem the time for them. From the youngest to the eldest in their family, there is nothing too hard. There is nothing too hard. Even the wrestling, okay, now this is for those of you that's watching online, the wrestling that you have in your soul that you won't let God deal with. I'm here to rebuke you right now. Let it go so that you can be free. This isn't about punishing somebody else. This isn't about an area of false security you've got to be free and so father we pray freedom purpose and clarity in the name of Jesus we thank you right now Lord I pray father that you would even begin to 
reprioritize days and hours in the name of Jesus. I just hear the Lord say, start fresh. Start fresh. Don't try to fit in what you've already been doing. Start fresh. Allow him with a blank sheet of paper to begin to write it all out for you. Don't try to add what he wants to do with what you're already doing. Start fresh. I hope this makes sense. Because I don't know what I'm talking about, but I know what I'm hearing. I pray for peace in unfamiliar places. I pray for strength and endurance in the process. God is faithful that promise. God is faithful that promise. If he spoke it, won't he do it? Well, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. He is the God of his word. And he watches over his word to perform it. So, Father God, we stand with the Griffin family. And we give you per permission to perform your word. Come on and pray that with me. Perform it, Lord. For the Griffin family. In the name of Jesus. Come on and give God praise. Okay. I think this is the last one. I think this is the last one. Come on, night household. Because you're connected with that as well. You, you're, you're connected with that as well. I, I heard it. Did y'all agree with what I was praying with them? Did that make sense? Y'all agree with that? There is a new level of purpose that you're not here by accident. Okay, God does not work in coincidences. And man, that's crazy. He don't do that. He's all about purpose. He's all about purpose. And the connection of this household was intentional. It was designed from the beginning. Now, he did not want those things that happened in your past to happen the way they did. But he redeems it by connecting you with what you still need. It's here. It's in him. It's in him. And so the word for you is very similar to the word for the Griffin household. It is for clarity. Because what I'm hearing is that you ladies are going through a transition. And this transition is not one of just household, but it is one of purpose. It is one of maturity. It is one where it's almost like you, you sense God calling you, but you really don't know how to respond to it yet. It, it's, like, it's almost like a fight because I, I'm, I'm too young for this, and I don't know if that's really him, and I don't want to be what I've seen. But, but what, I, what I'm sensing is that God is bringing you into something that is authentic. He is bringing you, if, if you would, would, would settle the fight, if, if you would come to the point of saying, Lord, have your way, what you're going to start to see is a whole new atmosphere in the house. What you're going to begin to see is, is a, man, where you were struggling, things are going to become easy because you have taken it off of you trying to do it and allowing God to do it for you. And some, man, some of the things I'm saying, I, I know you don't really understand it right now. It's, it's going to make sense in, in, in a while. It's going to make sense in a while. But what God wants from you is your yes. He doesn't even need your full understanding. He just needs your yes. God, I will allow you to be God. God, if I hear you, I will obey. If I understand, if, if I see this is what you want me to do, God, I will do it. And what's going to happen is the things that you are concerned about, God is going to begin to position himself in front of you as a guard. Where the things that you thought that you had to hide from, that you were afraid of, that you had to defend against, that you won't even have to fight in some of those battles. You're going to begin to find out even years from now that things were happening that you didn't even know that you were being kept from. And so, Father, we pray right now for a hedge of protection over these virtuous women. We pray a hedge of protection over their purpose, their calling, their innocence. Redeem, Father God, even their past in the name of Jesus. 
those things that they're fighting, Lord God, because they are terrified of going back into what they came out of, of experiencing before, that it might happen again. Father, I pray that there will be a new level of confidence in you. Be their shield and their protector. The psalmist said it like this, shield and their buckler. Be that for them, oh God. Stand before them as their defender. And I pray, Lord, for the head of the house, that you will crown her head with wisdom to be able to manage and to pour into all of these personalities, all of these anointings. I pray, Lord, that you give her patience, but also give her strength to raise the standard. I thank you right now. Man, okay. Jesus. I pray the, the mantle of Naomi over you. That just as Naomi took Ruth out of Moab and made her her family and taught her and showed her the ways of God. So much so where the women began to, that Ruth began to make a different declaration. I pray that you would give her wisdom and strength to be the right example for these women, to give them the right training that they need. Connect them, Lord God. Connect them in the spirit even where they may be lacking in the DNA. Connect them, Lord. And I thank you right now that there will not even be any jealousy among them, but unity in this house. Bless these young women that they will not be what they've seen, but they will be who you have called them to be. In the name of Jesus, we thank you right now. Let your anointing, Father God, rest on this family. That they will begin to move. Man. I pray in the name of Jesus that this household will become a training center. Of women. A training center. Intercessors are going to be birthed out of this household. In the name of Jesus. Preachers and teachers are going to be birthed out of this household. In the name of Jesus. I thank you right now. Establish, Lord God, these women. That they will be the wives, the mothers, the sisters that this generation needs. We give you glory right now in the name of Jesus. Come on and help me pray. Anointing, let it rest on them. Anointing. 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 Let it rest in the name of Jesus. Come on and give God praise. Come on and magnify him. Come on and magnify him. Glory. Hallelujah. He may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, please don't think that your family is any less important. We are continuing to pray for your family as well. But this is who God assigned in this moment. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. As a matter of fact, there were some things that I was praying for these families that you agreed with. Come on, just receive it. Just receive it. Just receive it.
understand the fight that I went through this week. Got it. Changing my attitude, though. Can't stand him, man. Can't stand that devil. this word because this word is not just for our today it's for where we're going so if I go a little long today and you gotta leave I pray that you rearrange some things so you can stay to get all of what God has for you But I, I, I gotta give you this Come on, let's just take a moment and worship the Lord right there. Come on, if you got your prayer language, come on and pray in the spirit. If you don't have a prayer language, come on, just tell them hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
church that we listen, we learn, and we live. Help us, Lord. You told us that it's not the hearers, but the doers of your word that will be blessed. Help us even now to make up our minds to do what you have declared. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. message to help us to change our minds because we have an attitude problem. Help us to understand that he took the sting out of death and victory out of the grave. But today I have a prophetic message. Now let me be very clear because a lot of times when people hear that, they hear prophecy, the word prophecy or prophetic, they always assume that it's future telling. That is the word of wisdom. But when you think about the difference between prophecy and the word of wisdom, the word of wisdom is all about what's coming. But prophecy, it speaks about the mind of God, the opinion of God. And so there are times where he will come to prophesy to give his opinion on what you've been through, to give his mind on where you are, or to give his instruction on what you ought to do next. And that's what the word is for today. It is God's opinion. Of after this move, after this prayer, after this time of worship, what do we do now? What do we do now? What do we do now? Stand with me if you are able and meet me in Ezra chapter 3 verses 1 through 3. Reading out the New King James Version. My title is One Word. I'm going to do my best to not be before you long. If you're able to stand, we want you to stand. For those of you that's watching us online, thank you so much for being here. want to encourage you to share this broadcast. If this is your first time here, welcome. We're so uh 
gracious and grateful that you decided to, uh, to join with us digitally today. Coming out of the New King James Version, it'll be on the screens if you don't have your Bible. And I want to encourage you to take notes because note takers are decision makers. The notes that you take today will be a reminder next week. It'll be your prophecy months from now. It'll be your deliverance years from now because the word of God never expires. And God is not obligated to repeat himself. And so when we take notes, it is an indication to God that I take your word seriously. And I want to make sure that I don't let one word fall to the earth. Ezra chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. And when the seventh month had come, and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered together as one man to Jerusalem. Then Jeshua, the son of Josadak, and his brethren, the priests, and Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and his brethren, arose and built the altar of the God of Israel to offer burnt offerings on it, as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. Though fear had come upon them because of the people of those countries, they set the altar on its basis, and they offered burnt offerings on it to the Lord. Both the morning and evening burn offerings. Uh, before you take your seats, do me a favor. Just look at somebody and tell them my, t my message today is rebuild. 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 You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Rebuild. 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 Now, I'm going to need some help with this message. It, 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 can, I, can I have somebody that, that will volunteer that want to come help me? All right. Come on. I'm going to need you to come up here. Have you ever played Jenga before? All right. So I'm going to need you to take them out of there and, and stack them up, all right? And then after you stack them up, just kind of stay there. Now, it's up to you if you want to spill them all out, but yeah, stack them up on that table, and I'll come back to you. Let me know when you're ready. All right. Rebuild is, is the word that the Lord has given us uh, partially because of what we even prayed today, that there is an attack on families. There's an attack on households, and if we're not careful, uh, we will allow circumstance to be our final destination. But I'm, I'm here to tell you that God has more for you than where you are right now. God desires more for you than what's happening to you right now. Man, okay, I, did, did you catch that? He has more for you than where you are right now. He desires more for you than even what you have experienced right now. All right. Now, um, the seventh month, the Bible talks about in, in Ezra uh, chapter 3, that this happened in the seventh month. The seventh month was important in the Jewish tradition because on the tenth day of the seventh month was the Day of Atonement. Now, the Day of Atonement may not mean a whole lot to us if we don't understand Jewish tradition, but the Day of Atonement is something that happened once a year. The Day of Atonement was the day where the high priest would come. He would kill uh, uh, the sacrifice and come to sacrifice on the altar for the deliverance of the entire nation of Israel. It would happen one day. It was something that was so uh, necessary because he shows us, even going back to Genesis chapter 3, that without the, the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So blood had to be shed. And so now this day of atonement was really just a foreshadow to Christ on the cross. How many know that Christ is the lamb that was slain for us? And what he did once, man, thank you, Pastor Shay. He died for us once and for all. The day of atonement was an annual event. Because it was temporary. But what Christ did for us was once and for all. But the day of atonement was something that he told them to remember, to, to put into, into practice as a foreshadow of what was coming. But also looking back at to what they've already been delivered out of. And so when we think about this, uh, the seventh month was important because the tenth day was the day of atonement. But there's a problem. According to their tradition... In Leviticus 23, the people are to rest from the first day until the 10th day in recognition of this atonement. They, they were to rest. 
Now, now this is really a, even a foreshadow to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, that our salvation is not according to our works, but it is a gift. And so, there, and so since we can't work for it, we might as well rest and just receive it. For by grace, you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. You got it? Because you had their attention. You good? Stay right there. Stay right there. You're not done. Did he do it right this time? That was that was messing y'all was messing y'all up, wasn't it? I was gonna let him go, but y'all okay, thank you. Thank, you. <laughs> thank God that he gives us help. So so they were supposed to rest according to tradition from the first day until the tenth day before, uh, to uh, to then offer the sacrifice on the day of atonement. But there's a problem. To satisfy the atonement, there must be a sacrifice. The sacrifice happens at the altar. But as the exiles returned from Babylon, they recognized that their homes were destroyed. The temple was destroyed. The walls around the city of Jerusalem were destroyed. And the altar was destroyed. So they couldn't rest because they had work to do. All right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you. In a normal situation, they would have rested. But because the altar and their cities were in ruins. The temple, their homes, they couldn't rest. They had to rebuild in order to be prepared for the Day of Atonement. Now, do me a favor. If, if you follow with me, tell your neighbor, this isn't the time to chill. It's the time to build. All right? Now, rebuilding the altar was a matter of priority. Because the people chose, as we, if we look at the text, Ezra and Nehemiah it, historically were one book. And as we look at it, they chose to build the altar before building the temple, before building the walls, even before rebuilding their own households. And they chose it because this was a place of sacrifice. Now, this must be a priority because I, I got news for you. Hell is after your worship. Now, okay, some of you may be confused. When I'm saying worship, I don't mean your hallelujah. That's the expression of worship. But the actual uh, term worship, it really means devoted obedience. That I'm going to go with you wherever you go. That, that my, my, my focus and my intent is to be for you. And so whatever you tell me to do, it, I'm there. And so you cannot have... Uh, disobedience and worship you can't have disobedience and then hallelujah that's the picture of what Isaiah 29 and 13 says that you are praising me and I hear the right sound but your heart is far from me and so what makes worship worship and not just a clanging symbol in the ears of God is that what comes out of your mouth is in agreement with the posture of your heart. That what you are saying is in line with how you are living. Now, if you're not there, you say, Lord, help me. But it's a matter of worship and hell is after your obedience. He doesn't want you worshiping God. He doesn't want you obeying God. He doesn't want you sacrificing to the Lord. He doesn't even want you giving your expression to God that's why he comes at you with thoughts and suggestions and all kind of feelings and emotions he's trying to do whatever he can to get you to stop your worship it's after your worship it's after your worship do you really think Satan cares about your money your job your family or your house? No. But if those things will cause you to stop worshiping, then we lost the battle. If we could somehow be convinced that building our house is more important than building a place of worship, building our relationship with the Lord, then we lost the battle. If we could be convinced that building our happiness is more important than building character in Christ, then we've lost the battle. Come on, put your hand on your chest and tell yourself Christ must be first. 
He must be first. He must be. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added. Christ must be first. And so when we see this word build, let me go back to the scripture, Ezra 3. And when the seventh month had come and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered together as one man to Jerusalem. Then Jeshua, the son of Josedach, and his brethren, the priests, and Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and his brethren arose and built the altar of the, of the God of Israel. That word build, it comes from the Hebrew word bana, which means to build, to rebuild, and to establish. Say that with me. Build rebuild and establish that means if something happens we have a responsibility to build rebuild and establish did I startle you <laughs> I might need to have somebody else up here ain't gonna don't, 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 don't keep your hands in your pockets brother keep your hands. <laughs> all right all right all right now, why is it important to rebuild the altar? Uh, I'm going to give you three things that the altar represents. Number one, the altar represents sacrifice. There is no sacrifice just anywhere. The sacrifice had to be at a specific place, and that was an altar. It was a place that was designated for sacrifice. And, and so what I'm telling you is, is that you can't just give yourself to any place and to anybody and think that God's going to be pleased. You cannot just invest yourself and your resources in any place and any place and anywhere and think that it is acceptable unto God. God is very specific. He has a set place and he has set the place for sacrifice as the altar. The altar. The altar. Now when we think of altar, we think of this. Just, just the place in the front of the church. But when the people, when the, the Israelites, when they heard altar, they saw a, a furnace. They saw a, a, a place that was bloody, a place that had a smell to it because death took place there. There was blood and it was messy and it was all over the place and they had to drain the blood and they had to slice up the sacrifice and they had to put them on the fire and it would become an aroma unto God. It, it wasn't an easy process. See, some of us, we come to this altar, we'll pray for two minutes and then we'll go home and we feel good about ourselves. But a sacrifice on an altar took time. It wasn't a quick process. Dying wasn't easy. Killing was not a quick process. It, it took time to, to, to present the sacrifice in a way that was acceptable unto God. First of all, they had to choose a sacrifice that was acceptable unto God. Let me ask you a question. Do you just give God anything? But I want to challenge you and what you offer to the Lord. First of all, God, is this acceptable to you? Now, now, my Bible readers, you should hear that. And it should cause you to think about Romans chapter 12, that I offer my own body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable. Am I acceptable to you? Is this attitude acceptable? Are these thoughts that are living rent free in my head acceptable? My decisions, my motivation, my word, where I'm going, what I'm doing, who I'm with, is my life acceptable to you? The worst thing that you can do is offer a sacrifice that God will not accept. We begin to understand the attitude that Cain had. God came to him and said, why? Why, why are you in your feelings? You know what's right to do. If you had offered what was acceptable, would I not have accepted yours too? I'm not playing favors between you and your brother. He did what was right. But then he says, um, I need you to be very careful. Sin is crouching at the door. But you must master it. Isn't that interesting? That he's having a conversation about sacrifice and he brings in sin. Could it be, Josh? That sin has a way of interrupting what we would normally give to God. 
that sin has a way of, of confusing the matter of what we would feel obligated to give him. Maybe we don't feel like we can and, and maybe we don't feel like we should and, and maybe we don't feel like it's worthy because I have not mastered what was lying at my door. The altar represents sacrifice. The altar also represents worship. Worship and sacrifice in the Old Testament are really synonymous because you cannot worship without a sacrifice. For worship to be valuable, it should cost you something. Now again, let me bring it to our context because we see worship as hallelujah. But then let me ask you this question. Are we willing to pay the price of humiliation to express our gratitude to God? Or will we keep our hands in our pockets because we don't want somebody to say something about us and you know we don't want somebody to look at us a certain kind of way so I, I, I will mute my voice and, and I will stifle my hands and my stretch because I don't want anybody looking at me as if we're that important. But it should cost you something it should cost you. This is the reason why we continue to teach that when you're worshiping, don't stop just when your body says, okay, stop. No, press through that. You got to train your body. I know you may be tired, but let me get one more hallelujah out of that belly. I, I, I know you may uh, feel it fatigue, but I'm not going to allow my weariness to influence my worship. I am going to give God my all because I recognize that's what he deserves. How dare I let my body control my level of worship? How dare I let my emotions control my level of worship? Not if I can confess that he died for me and he got up. Not if I know with confidence and with assurance that he is my all in all. And so when he's asking me for a little bit, why am I limited? So if it costs me some time, if, if it costs me uh, what I would normally allocate to another place. If it cost me, even King David had a right to the property of those that were subject to him. And when he came to offer a sacrifice, one of his uh, subjects says, listen, you can have my threshing floor. He said, I will give it to you so that you can make an altar there. He said, David replied back to him. He says, um, no, 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 I'm going to pay you. I'm not going to allow you to give this to me for free, but I dare not offer the Lord something which cost me nothing. Because whatever I assign a value to, I assign importance to, I assign priority to. That's why we'll do certain things for some people and not others. It's a matter of priority. That's the reason why we'll engage and we'll sacrifice to do certain things, but other things uh, I'll get to it next week because it's a matter of importance. But where is our worship in that pecking order? Where is the limit? Where is that line in the sand that say, God, I'll give you everything up to this point. It's time to rebuild. The altar, the place of sacrifice is a place of worship, but the altar is also a precursor to his presence because it is in the activity of worship and in sacrifice that we see the demonstration of the first commandment that there shall be no other gods before him. So when I, when I sacrifice, when I'm worshiping, I'm demonstrating as an illustration that I am devoted to no one or no thing above you above you come on say it with me again Christ is first Christ is first now now if you be honest there's some brokenness in areas of our lives I wonder if that could be because of the lack of priority of God's will God's word and his presence could my brokenness that I'm trying to fix on my own really be the result that I didn't let him have his way anyway? And so instead of just letting him have his way, let me try to work out something else. But if you just back up and let him have his way, how many of you know he has the ability to fix what you cannot? A big part of our attitude problem is the change that we must make 
to no longer accept what has been torn down. To no longer settle for residing among the ruins. And I want to prophesy you to you today that there is a restoration that God wants to perform in you. And as you choose to rebuild, it is an indication of what he is building in you. I need you to catch that today. That when we make the choice to rebuild, block on top of every block, stack on top of every stack, that we are coming in line with what God wants to do in you. God told me, Pastor Marla, in prayer this week that I need to rebuild my people. I got some people that are walking around in rubbish that have become comfortable and functional in dysfunction. I don't know if you know anybody like that. They've learned, they've become acceptable and not having their blocks where it's supposed to be. And because there's still some blocks stepped up there, I'm still good. But I'm here to tell you the word for today. You say it with me. Rebuild. 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 Because I'm not going to be satisfied until I'm all that God has called me to be. I cannot be satisfied until I have all that he has desired for me to have. Rebuild, rebuild. Now, we've got to make sure, i got to make sure that, I, that, I'm, that I'm doing the text justice. Because if we look at, it, at Ezra chapter 3, we will not see the personal struggles of the people. We will not see their attitudes. We will not see their emotional state. We will not see their financial state. What we know is that they were just released out of captivity. They were coming home from Babylon. Now that's a reason to rejoice. God, I thank you. I am free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. And what in the world? What happened to my house? What happened to the wall that was protecting our city? Can you imagine how fast their emotions flipped from rejoicing to almost anger and frustration because what they were released to go back to did not look like what they, what they expected it to look like? Come on, say it with me, rebuild. And so you may have people that were going through mourning about what was broken, but they still had to rebuild. They, they complaining about what was not down, but still had to rebuild. Wondering why things happened the way it happened, unanswered questions, but I still got to be, be I still got to rebuild. The altar was important because it represents death, sacrifice, worship, and his presence. No life without death. And so I had a man build this stack. Because I want to give us, Lord showed me this visual representation sometimes of what our life looks like. We got it stacked up. We do our best to have it right. All the blocks are lined up. Ain't nothing poking out. But every now and then, life happens. And uh, there's a block right there, sir, that has uh, an L on it. Can you pull that block out? help because life don't play fair life don't play fair you were good loving the Lord and then you lost your job somebody say rebuild life doesn't play fair you had gotten to a point where your relationship with Christ was doing good you had 
have made up your mind. And then here come an old phone call that you thought that you were packed. Every now and then. Did you raise your hand to be a prayer? You helping? Okay, okay. I'm just wondering now. Oh, you the Holy Spirit. You got to watch these preachers, boy. I'll tell you. But life has a way of waiting to when it seems like everything is in place. And you feel like where you just want to take your time and just, I can exhale and then life happens. Car repossession, life happens. Get sick, life happens. Unexpected circumstance, life happens. Somebody betrayed you, life happens. And then they leave you and it feels like you have got to just rebuild it or, okay, you and Holy Spirit. (laughs) Trying to change up my illustration, Ariel. (laughs) Because the reality is, if Ezra, God didn't say, I'm going to build it for you. He said, you build it. I've given you the strength to build it. And we get it back, and we're good, and he's looking at me some kind of way. (laughs) It wasn't my fault. Life happens. I thought I was going to get that promotion, and I got looked over. Life happens. The economy turned, and my investments went belly up. Life happens. I was working for a company, and now they're telling me they have no pension left. Life happens. What do I do? I know she said, please don't say that. (laughs) Just an illustration. I'm just an illustration. All right. You, you thought you and your boo was forever. You thought, but then he went out and found somebody. You thought life happens. And sometimes life is out of your control. But we got to still rebuild. But unfortunately, that's not all. Sometimes, pull the teeth. That's the tea you want? That's the tea you got? Tempted. Now, this is on us. Let, let, let's, let's poll the room. How many of us can say that we've been tempted this week and we passed every temptation? I don't see any hands. Sorry, bro. Oh, cone it. Oh, cone it. Because temptation will bring us at a point, I feel his eyes in the back of my head. You said you love me, right? Okay. You volunteered to, you know. But isn't that how we do? The temptation came. We had the choice. Did we have to fall to the temptation? We did not have to fall to the temptation. So temptation came. We chose to fall. And then... Now we're in a place where we got to rebuild. Now, you know what's interesting? Before he started to rebuild, he took a moment to just be angry about what just happened. Now, how many of us stay in that place before we start rebuilding? Come on, help me preach this. Get your attitude together and rebuild. Get your mind. Listen, it happened. Rebuild. You can't undo what you did. Rebuild. What happened to the Holy Spirit, boy? (laughs) See, 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 see. Let me make a disclaimer. The Carpenter Church does not represent a a Holy Spirit that is sometimey. The Holy Spirit that we know, the one that's in the Bible, is consistent. He is an ever present help. Hey. Amen. Even when we fall. And he don't have attitude either. If you're going to help, help. <laughs> you don't have to put in, okay, listen. He's trying to be temptation. Because temptation happens. I don't care how saved you are. I don't care how long you've been going. 
Uh, I don't care how many Bible scriptures you can memorize. I don't care how many you ta 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 and hey 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 hey. Temptation will try every one of us. Now here's the thing. Temptation for you may be in one place in your wall, but it may be in a different place in my wall. But every one of us are going to be tempted. The question is, not are we going to be tempted, but what are we going to do with that temptation? Now, I would have thought by this time that they would have put all the blocks with letters. See? You see? But we don't always think about how we want to organize things. Sometimes we just want to, let me just get it back together. Let me just get it back together so I can move on without even considering what's happening. So then trials come. Oh, oh. Trials come. Has he started building yet? Because trials happen. Because here's the thing, Jimmy. God knows what's in us. We're tired of rebuilding. But God knows that as you are rebuilding, I'm strengthening some things in you. As you are rebuilding, I, I'm, I'm restructuring some things in you. As you are rebuilding, that trial is not the end of you. And here's where the enemy wants to have you, where he has you thinking that, you know what? Um, the fact is... Your trial is not the conclusion of your life. There is an after the trial. Man, that was a good place to praise him. Come on, somebody say that with me. There is an after this trial. I know this trial may be long. This trial may be hard. But when that trial comes, if it knocks down your wall, rebuild. You have one instruction, rebuild. Now, here's the thing. How fast will it take you to rebuild? How soon will you start your rebuilding process or are you going to stay in the pity party for a week? Are you going to stay in, in a funk for a month because you mad that the trial came? You mad that it fell down again? You mad that certain things were outside of your control. You're mad that there's some things that happened and you should have did this and the woulda, coulda, shoulda. And man, I wish I had, but here I go again and I just rebuilt this wall and here I am building again. And sometimes life really gets on your nerves. He don't even wait till you finish building. He comes and while you're in the building process, like God, I haven't even got over this yet and now that's happening. I haven't even finished this one trial and now something else is happening God please just let me get over this first let me get over this first I, I just heard the news about this and then here comes something else God why don't you have my back where are you but the word for you is rebuild 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 the altar Rebuild the place of worship. Rebuild the place of sacrifice. Rebuild the place that is the precursor to his presence. Rebuild. Because, listen, what you're building is not just for you. What you're building is not just about you. What you're building is not even just for your benefit, but other people are going to benefit from what you are building. You don't have the time to sulk. You don't have the time to sit there in a pity party and be mad that it fell down. You need to take that same energy and rebuild. Come on, tell your neighbor, take that same energy and rebuild. Because it happens. It happens. No, you're good. It happens. It happens. Now, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Now, stay right there. Stay right there. So you, you, you minister to my brother right there, Holy Spirit. Because sometimes Holy Spirit won't protect you from life. And this is where we get mad at God. We want God to be our big brother to prevent bad things from happening. He never promised us that. As a matter of fact, he told us in the book of John uh, that things are going to happen. He said, in this world, you will have trouble. He said, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. Now, so you, you with him? You ministering to him? You strengthening him? You got him? All right, because his face. 
still. His his face. You know, you know, I don't know. The way his arms are crossed right there. <laughs> so, so okay, I, I I need I need one last person for this illustration. Can I can I get one more person for this illustration? Oh, come through, come, come through, Charles. And we're gonna conclude right here. Now, what I need you to be, Charles, is an intercessor. Here's, here's what I need you to be. So your job is to be in the gap. For those that was in Bible study, Ezekiel 22 and 30, God says, I was looking for a man to be in the gap, to be to build the wall, and I found none. So certain things happen. Now, it's your job to keep me from that. And slides. I need to have you sign a waiver, brother, for your ACL, right? No, I'm just... So you don't sue the... <laughs> we snatch ankles, brother. You a goalie? No, I'll make, I'll make it easy for you. But this is the job of the intercessor. To help protect our brother... From what he has built. He, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. <laughs> because life is going to continue to happen. <laughs> and it does not always play fair. <laughs> and it is the job of the intercessor to be in the gap. This is why we've got to pray. <laughs> because we're not just protecting our brother, they say, emotions. But we're here to protect what we, what we built. We are building something. And we need each other to be in the gap for one another to protect what is built. Now, life happens. Because what we, if I had time, I would have another stack that was for Charles. I see, but he ready. That was for Charles. We got two intercessors. We got two intercessors. Anybody call you up here? And Holy Spirit. Now, here's the thing. Each one of them had their own stack. So what happens if his stack falls? If he allows his stack falling to get him out of his place, and he allows his stack falling, because I got to take care of me. Before I can help you, brother, if, before I can deal with you, sister, I got to get me together. But now... So we need, come on back intercessors, we need intercessors that will say, I don't care what I'm going through. I know I'm dealing with life the way you're dealing with life. I'm dealing with temptation the way you're dealing with temptation. I'm dealing with trials the way you're dealing with trials. But I love God and I love you enough to not leave my post. I love God and I love, look, because we're building something together. And I love you enough because I'm not going to... So it's not just a matter of rebuilding, but protecting what we built. This is an illustration even of the work of the intercessor. Now what happens if they get tired? What happens when they want to take a day off? What happens if, if, if we become selfish and we become so involved in our own life that, you know what, ah, my family's going through and, and my job and my this and my that. We have got to trust God and watch this. Trust one another as the church that as he's defending his wall, he's defending him. We have an intercessor for the intercessor and an intercessor for the intercessor for the intercessor and an intercessor for the intercessor for the intercessor's intercessor and an intercessor's 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 intercessor. I'm going to stop right there. And when we have that, that is a picture of the church that God wants us to be. When we are like that, then what that allows us to do is to not only build and rebuild, but to maintain what we built. Because life happens. Life happens. But how much easier is it for him to rebuild when he's protected? 
Because sometimes life doesn't even wait till things are convenient. <laughs> life doesn't always announce when it's coming. Sometimes trials happen at 2 in the morning. Sometimes life happens when you're already going through some things. You already rebuild it. You're tired. You're fatigued. But God says rebuild. 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 Thank you, Jamie. Give, give him a round of applause. I'm done. Listen, I need another Holy Spirit next time. This, this brother cut too many side eyes. That's not a, an accurate representation. That, okay, that's what it was. Okay, attitude problem. That's what that was. Gotcha. 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 So the Lord wanted me to share with you today. Again, the prophetic message for you. Rebuild. Rebuild. It does not matter how long it takes. Start. It does not matter what you got to go through. Do it. It does not matter what's coming against you or how many times it seems like you got to rebuild it. You keep picking up those blocks. We don't have time. We don't have time. We've got to rebuild. We've got to rebuild. If I had time, I would take you to Nehemiah where they were rebuilding the wall and they were hearing the threats that were coming from other nations. And so the Bible says that they put uh, they put a group of people so that with one hand they built and with another hand they held a weapon. And so what you see is a picture of people that were, you can leave it there, of a people that were building but protecting at the same time. Building and protecting at the same time. Do me a favor. Touch your neighbor and say, I got you. 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 We all building. But here's the thing. What we're building is connected. As one church, as one body, one faith, one Lord, one hope, one baptism, what we're building is together. It's the reason why I didn't stop him from coming to help. That's what we should do. The Bible says rejoice with those that rejoice and mourn with them that mourn. What are we doing? We're building together. It's the picture of the church. It's not the picture of a service. It's a picture of the church. I might need you to help me build on a Tuesday night. I might need you to help me build on early Saturday morning. I might need you to help me build on a Friday. I know you had plans. I know it. I, I, I know you had your, your schedule that you were going to do on Thursday afternoon, but my, but my life got knocked down. Because the word that was given to the Israels was not to one man. It was to the whole nation. He called out the priests that were to start the project but it was never the intent of just one person, one family. The church is a family of families. And as the Carpenter's Church, we cannot just be concerned about one another from Sunday to Sunday. We, we, we got to move past this whole idea of I, I can't tell anybody what I'm going through as if we don't all have a wall, as if we don't all have trials temptations and life that's happening to us I'm here to help you build and when you build your altar and I build my altar and we're all sacrificing and we're all worshiping and we're all seeking the presence of God did you notice how the attitude changed when Sean and Charles was up here there's a boldness when you know that somebody has your back there's a boldness when you know, listen, I'm going through it, but I know who I can call on. I, 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 I know who's going to help me, but I know who's going to protect me. I know who's praying for me. And if I be honest, some of us are living our lives with blocks around our feet. Because we have been rebuilding this thing so much and we get frustrated. We haven't found our help or we rejected our help help is available. Stand to your feet. I'm done. This message today is one of personal responsibility, but also corporate responsibility. It's up to you to build. 
I can't build your wall for you. I can't help you rebuild what God has called you to rebuild. But I can intercede for you. I can help where you let me help. So what I want you to do today is grab hands. I want you to pray for your neighbor. I want you to pray for your neighbor. Matter of fact, Josh, if you can bridge the gap between Montreal and Sean. Thank you, sir. I want you to pray for your neighbor. Pray for your neighbor. Because you don't recognize how much strength your neighbor needs. You know, you may not recognize the frustration that your neighbor is going through because they're tired of rebuilding. There's a temptation that like, man, God, I'm so tired. Every time I rebuild it to a certain point, it falls down again. I'm tired. I'd rather not even waste my time. Just let it down. Let's let it stay down. But I'm here to charge you today to rebuild. Rebuild. Let's pray. Father, I thank you right now for the hand that I'm holding. I thank you right now because you know much better than I do the life that is coming against them, the temptations that are facing them, the trials, Lord, that seem to overwhelm them. Our, our walls may be in different places. Our rebuilding project may be in different places. But Lord, we all need you. And so I pray, Lord, that you strengthen the hand that I'm holding. Give them endurance, oh God. Give them the fortitude and, and, and the temerity that I will not stop, but I will continue. Lord, I thank you right now. Strengthen, Lord, hands to build and to rebuild and to establish. And Lord, as they are making up their minds, areas in their lives that need to be rebuilt, it could be financial, it could be relational, it could be in their relationship with you, Father. It could be in their diet. But Lord, wherever those areas that they are making up in their mind to rebuild, I pray, Lord, that you will begin to rebuild their soul. Begin to rebuild, Father God, their integrity. Rebuild, Father God, their motivation. Rebuild, Father, that they might walk in the character of who you are. Well, this is not the hour to shrink back. Help us to stand. This is not the hour, Lord, for pity parties and sulking. This is the hour to build and to rebuild that we might be a people that are established as the church of the living God. Lord, you have called us and we surrender to you. We surrender to you. I pray, Lord, even for the hand that I'm holding that you would teach me how to pray for this hand. Show me, Lord, in my times of prayer, remind me, Lord, of how I need to pray. Give me insight on how I need to pray for the hand that I'm holding. Let this not just be a public demonstration, but a lifestyle of connectedness because you have called us as one body, supplying to one another what is needed. I pray, Father, even for those that are watching us online, strengthen them in the name of Jesus. That one that may be watching that does not have a hand to hold. I pray, Lord, that you would show them that they are not forsaken, but that you are with them. Strengthen your people. Strengthen our resolve. Change our attitudes, Lord. And I pray, Lord, as we surrender to you, that we will be acceptable in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, if this was for you, come on and give God praise today. Did this bless anybody today? I pray that this helped you. Now, this is a picture of a life that is surrendered in Christ. You may be looking at this and be like, I don't even know where to begin. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, that's where we begin. That's the first building block my yes to him and if you have made up your mind that today is the day that you're going to surrender your life to Christ I want you to meet me at this altar and it's not because we're trying to make a spectacle of you we want everybody to see you it's not about that 
But this life is a life of faith. And so by you moving from where you are to walk up here is a demonstration of faith that I'm moving from where I am in the spirit. That I am surrendering my life, my will, the direction of my life, the leadership of my life to Jesus. If that's you today, come on, don't waste time. Meet me at this altar. If you've given your life to Christ and you have fallen away and you want to come back and renew that relationship, the altar is open. The altar is open. Now you may say, I'm I'm nervous, but I want to do it and I don't want to do it by myself. Well, if that's you, just, just tap the person next to you. That'll tell them to come walk with you. And they'll walk with you down here. Because we want to make sure that nothing and no one's keeping you from what is the greatest decision you could ever make. Today is the day. And tomorrow is not promised. Would there be one? If you're watching us online and you say, man, pastor, that's me. I I need to surrender my life to Christ. He's been pulling on me. He's been talking to me. And I know I'm concerned about being a hypocrite but I know what I need to do. Don't worry about being a hypocrite. You give him today. We'll let tomorrow worry about itself. If that's you and you're watching me online, just put it in the chat that I want to be saved. And we'll make sure to have one of our leaders reach out to you and show you just how easy it is. Hallelujah. Now, if you need prayer for anything, if we were praying, we prayed a lot today, and if we didn't cover... Uh, your prayer needs then we're going to ask you to come to the altar as well y'all want to accept Jesus alright come on and give God praise for the babies alright so let's let's make sure that that we understand um, what we're doing okay it doesn't mean that you're perfect but what it means is that you're going to trust God with your life. It means that you believe that he died for you on the on the cross. Do you believe that? It also means that you believe that he got up from the grave. Do you believe that? And that he lives forever. Now, when we believe that, that's the first step. Okay? What that means is going from here, we want as much as possible to live our life to please him, to make him happy. You know how you live your life to make your parents happy? You don't do that? I feel you. I feel you. Do you you obey your mom and daddy? Yes. That makes God happy. That makes your parents happy. Do you obey your parents, your, your grandmother, your aunties? Sometimes that's what it takes to make God happy, okay? And what he wants is for us to live a life that obeys him, okay? All right. Is this... All of you all are making the same decision? All right. Amen. Can we give God praise for these children? Amen. All right. So, we're going to pray, okay? And I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord, thank you for dying for me. Thank you for getting out that grave. Lord, I give you my life, and I ask you to lead me. Help me to be like you. Help me to trust you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, y'all give God praise. Hey, man, that is beautiful. All right. Okay. Come on. We're going to pray for you. Is there anybody else that needs prayer today? Is there anybody else that needs prayer? The altar is open. The altar is open. Now, while I'm thinking about it, parents, we're going to be, I want to say, 
August, we're, uh, we're going to be going down to Mission Bay uh, for baptisms. And we're going to baptize, we're going to baptize these kids and anybody else that wants to be baptized that has not been baptized or that wants to do it again. We're going to be baptized uh, right there in Mission Bay. We're going to make it an all-day event, so we're going to have more information coming. All right. Amen. Come on, pastors. healer, our deliverer, our comforter, and our strength. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Strengthen in order. We're praying for your daughters. We're going to pray for you. You the head. scenario and what could happen. But Lord, we thank you that you are a defender of the weak. You are a protector of your children. You have made healing available. And I pray, Lord, that what you do in his daughter, that you would also do in his spirit, do it in his soul. I thank you right now that this man is acquainted with you, but there's still areas, Lord God, that you are calling him to surrender. Help him to hear your voice. In the name of Jesus, I pray a hedge of protection about him and his household. Cover his family, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let your blessing, Lord God, be upon him that he might know that it is you that's working for him and nothing else. We thank you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on and give God praise today. Amen. Are you going with daddy or auntie? She's torn. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Did this help anybody today? Did this, did this make sense today? All right. God bless you. God bless you. Hey. Just talk to me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm horrible at reading lips. All right. So he was reminding me, we may have people here that you've been visiting and you believe that this is a place where you can trust that God is going to help you to be the man, the woman that he has called you to be. That as crazy as I might act sometimes, that you trust the God in me as, as your pastor. And if that's you and you want to become a member of the Carpenter's Church, 
then we want to open up the doors of the church today. If that's you, just stand to your feet. If, if that's you that want to be a member today, if you're watching us online, uh, you can put it in the chat that I want to be an online member. We love our online community, but we always want to make this an opportunity because the right place matters. The people you connect to matter. And we don't take it lightly. We know we're not for everybody. But we will fight and protect those that we know God has called for us. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. All right. Pastor Shea is coming to give us our announcements, lead us in the offering. Come on, give God praise for her as she comes. Right, announcements. The TCC block party happens here every Sunday at 11 a.m. Special guest appearance by the Holy Spirit. Invitation cards are in the church foyer. Take a handful of flyers and invite your entire block to the church. And if you live in an apartment, then invite your building. Want to go to the next place? Having a hard time breaking cycles? Those struggles may be connected to spiritual bondages. We will have a time for deliverance Sunday, April. Oh, this is this Sunday. Okay, this Sunday, April 14th. Please contact Pastor Latasha. Well, she's not here t today, so it will be Pastor. All right. Join the TCC Outreach Team on Saturday, April. That will be, what, what's the next? Okay, I'm sorry. Keep it going. Oh, on Saturday, April 27th at the Hunt Club Apartments. And that will be from 1 to 2 p.m. We'll be spreading the gospel to, to and praying with individuals we encounter. Let's all play our part at laborers in God's harvest. All right. Our next church business meeting will be on April 28th, directly after Sunday service. We encourage everyone to attend. Calling all men. We've been invited to join Generations Church at the front lines at the Men's Conference 2024 on third, May 3rd at 7 p.m. and on the 4th at 9 p.m. It will be a weekend of empowerment competition and food. See the flyer below. It's on the band app. Okay. All right. We'll be hosting the TCC Outreach Lifestyle Fair on the 22nd of June at 1 p.m. More information to come. Remember, we are still blessing families at TCC. Families Blessing Families offering is an offering collection dedicated to blessing one family per month. That family is announced on the last Sunday of each month. Let's continue to be a blessing to each other. Acts 4.32. Now the multitude of those who believe were at one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. All right. Are you a part of TCC staff? If not, there's plenty of room for you. The difference in TCC going to the next level involves you. Training is available. All we ask is that you be willing and committed. The areas where assistance is needed is listed on our band app. If you have questions, contact Pastor Latasha. All right. If you need to add an announcement, please see Minister Judy Ann. Have all information to her by Friday, 7 p.m. If not, your information will be added the following week. Hallelujah. Is there anything else? So I want to make sure um, right at the church, if I can see all of the men for maybe three minutes, uh, all, all, all of the men right at the church for, for three minutes. And uh, one thing I want to make sure, we, I don't think we recognize them enough. Can we give God praise for our musicians? And our praise team for ministering so diligently and, and uh, in, in the spirit of God and so sensitively. We thank God for them. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. All right. Let's get ready for our giving. All right. 
So if you want to give with Cash App, it's dollar sign mature in the Lord. If you want to give by Zelle, it's info at rebuildpeople.net. If you want to give here in the building, we have envelopes that can be passed out, and we can put it in a box in the back. Anybody needs the envelope, raise your hand. Get ready for our proclamation. All right. Let's begin. One, two, three. I proclaim that my seed is blessed. I give cheerfully and without compulsion. Thank you, God, for the privilege to give. Everything I have is because of your grace. Therefore, I will honor you by giving back to you a portion of what you have entrusted me. My giving is a part of my worship and a demonstration of my trust in you. Multiply this seed for your glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you for the increase. We thank you, Lord, for those who are able to give, maybe not from their finances, Lord, but from their hearts, from their give to encourage one another, Lord. We thank you, Father, for everything that's been provided, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. Anybody else have something? Remember to put your envelopes in the back in the box. All right. Amen. All right. If all hearts are ready, ready to dismiss. Anybody have anything before we go? We good? All right. We thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for this time that you've given us to fellowship with one another, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you put us on one accord that we understand that when things in our life get hit, be knocked down, but we can rebuild and get back up, Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you for the strength and endurance to rebuild. We thank you, Father, and we protect those as we're on our way in life, moving forward, Father, that you give us the grace and mercy and understanding as we go on through our days and through this week until we come together again. Father, we thank you that every family, every house is protected, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the encouragement as we move on. Hallelujah, that we be a blessing to one another, Father. Hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today at the Carpenters Church. To sow a seed into the ministry, you can use our cash app at dollar sign mature in the Lord. Or you can mail a check or money order to the Carpenters Church, P.O. Box 10004, Marino Valley, California, 92552. Again, thank you so much for worshiping with us today.